What's up guys, welcome back to our final video in our PWM series that we've been doing. This video we will be looking at how to create a dimming circuit by using a PWM uh, waveform to control an LED. And you'll see in this video by varying our pulse width of our waveform we can get different uh, brightnesses of our LED. So those of you that uh, don't know exactly uh, how the pulse widths and things like that work. If you check out the first video in this series, I explain the different pulse widths of the PWM wave, which PWM again stands for pulse width modulation. So we're going to be playing with the on time and the off time uh, ratio, which is usually called the duty cycle of it. By playing with the duty cycle, which is the ratio of the time the signal is on or at 5 volts versus the time the signal is off or at 0 volts, we can actually achieve uh, a dim, a dimmer or brighter uh, LED. So basically by increasing the on time or basically where we have a very narrow uh, band of time that it's off, the LED will be brighter because obviously it's, it's getting voltage the majority of the time. And then when we go the other way and we make the off time very large and the on time very narrow, then we will be getting a dimmer signal. And you'll see this uh, when we go roll into the demo video. I'll show you uh, the waveform as well as the actual light output of the LED. So we'll look forward to that video after this one. This is going to be a pretty simple circuit, as you can see. We'll probably uh, just do the roll right into the code right after uh, right after I show you this. I'm just going to show you the hardware real quick, and we'll roll right into the software. Basically, I've got our, our same circuit that we had set up in our previous videos, our PIC16F 1938 chip. So we got that guy set up. Um, I've got basically a little parameter. I'm using the ICD. Uh, so I'm using so that's what this little block shows you is how to hook up uh, the ICD3 is the one that I use which is the in circuit serial debugger. Uh, it's a product from Microchip. It helps uh, in debugging and uh, also programming your microcontrollers. What I like about it is that you don't have to remove the uh, microcontroller out of the circuit, put it into a programmer, program it, and put it back. So you're not popping it in and out all the time. So it is very nice to use uh, if you're doing, you know, if you're sitting there tinkering around with the code, you know, you can just reload it multiple, multiple times without actually having to remove the microcontroller from the circuit. So we also have our MemClear tied to a high. Um, you have to have an external MemClear uh, if you're going to use an ICD to uh, program with because it needs to be able to toggle that MemClear line to reset the pick. Also, what I've done for our dimming control um, is I've put on just a 20K potentiometer. I had that just laying around. So I just threw a 20K pot uh, from 5 volts to ground and the wiper connected it to RA0, which is our analog zero point on our analog to digital converter. So we'll be doing an analog digital conversion uh, to get a digital representation of that analog value so that way we can scale and change our duty cycle for our PWM waveform. Then, as uh, we did on the other one, I'm hanging uh, an LED off of uh, RC2, which is the port that we'll use to uh, output the PWM on. Um, I went ahead and did just a 470 ohm uh, resistor that's pretty standard for uh, LEDs on a 5 volt system. So, and then just one of the, well, just a standard, uh, I think I'm using one of my 5 millimeter LEDs, just standard LED. And that's pretty much it. That's all, that's all there is to it, uh, at least for this example. That's all there is to it. We got a potentiometer, so we can actually twist it, and that'll create a digital signal, um, some digital numbers, so that way we can uh, then issue that in and, and control the uh, pulse width of this guy so we can get a brighter or dimmer LED. So fairly straightforward. So let's go ahead and roll right into the code. I think I have that up. Uh, i got to find it. Do, 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 do. Here it is. So now I don't know if I've actually done a video on uh, ADCs and high tech C, but um, a quick rundown on it. Uh, you have to set up your registers for uh, you know whether which ones are analog, which ones are digital, and so on and so forth. So we'll, in fact, let me see. Uh, 
I'll see if I can't maybe do a quick rundown of that. Let me let me pull up a data sheet real quick. Okay, I think I've got uh, I think I got our data sheet for us. All right, so what we're going to look at is we've got the AD Con zero register and the AD Con one register. And how these work is these uh, set up our ADC, our analog digital converter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the ADC. I'm going to set the go done to zero uh, on initialization, and I'm going to tell it which pin I'm going to use for my ADC. Now the function that I'm declaring uh, will be sort of generic, but for the initialization, I think it's going to be pretty much all all zeros except for enabling the register or enabling the ADC, excuse me. So then we also have the ADCON1 register, which that's where we set up the clocking, any type of external voltage references, or anything like that uh, with that. And so that's the register that I'm going to set up. And whether it's right or left, justified the answer uh, registers that come out. This is all located in the data sheet. If you guys would like, I'm not going to spend a whole ton of time on this, but if you guys uh, need me to go ahead and describe in another video in depth how to do an ADC with the high tech C compiler, I can't remember if I've already done this or not, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the ADC portion of this, but that's basically the registers that you're going to touch with as long as our normal uh, analog select bits and whatnot to make sure we set up our our AN0 port as being an analog port as well as our uh, and then the rest of the ports being digital. So anyway, so that's basically what that is uh, just in a nutshell, just a quick brief rundown. So what we're doing here is we're defining our crystal to be a one megahertz internal oscillator. That's what we're doing. Um, here's the init A2D, which is our analog digital converter. There's those registers, the ADCON register, the ADCON1 register, and then we're turning the analog digital converter uh, on with the one command. So basically, that's that's the setup we need to set up for um, to set up in, uh, all of our frequencies and what uh, type of uh, oh, what is a sample clock and sample clock scaling and all that fun stuff. That's what this does for us. Then we've got the read A to D function. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to read the channel is um, basically whether it's AN0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're taking that and we're masking off some, some bits. We're also setting that portion of the ADCON0 uh, by and, anding in the ending in a C1, we're also setting that, and then also we're oring in the channel, which we shifted two bits uh, to the left, and then put that in, and what that'll do is that uh, that sets up the ADCON0 to the channel that we want, and all that fun stuff. Also, we set the go done bit, <clears throat> which the go done bit basically tells it to actually take a sample. What it will do is it basically charges an internal capacitor and performs the sampling, and that takes a little bit of time. So we're going to sit here in this while statement, and so we're going to say while go done is true, essentially, while it's still a one, we're just going to sit here in this while statement. And then go done will actually uh, flip to zero when the whole uh, ADC sample takes place, which like I said, it's a few clock cycles, so it's a few nanoseconds. And it will, uh, then that'll turn zero, which tells us that we're done. The answer is available when the go done bit turns to zero. The answer is stored in the address high and address low registers, which are these two, this one and that one. And <clears throat> that's what we're doing here is basically putting them back together. Remember that it is a 10-bit ADC. So even though it uses two registers, which are 8 bits apiece, basically makes address high and address low combined, makes 16 bits, we have to shift over address high 8 bits and add in this other register and then we're returning that value but we're all but it's a 10 bit so it'll only go to 1024 and not the what is it 65 535 or whatever it is that's uh, a 16 bit is it's not that big it's only a, to 1024 so keep that in mind so 0 to 1023 or whatever that would be yeah so <clears throat> since it's a 10 bit ADC so we're going to get back into our main function. We're setting our tri-state register A since we're using AN0, which is the first uh, pin in the A in port A. So we're setting uh, a hex one to that to set that as an input. Um, we're setting uh, pin C to or port C to all output, and then here's our AN select A, which is to set up 
everything is digital except for AN0. That one's going to be an analog, so that's why it's a 1. We're going to call our init function to initialize the analog digital converter. We're going to set up our timers and whatnot for the PWM. What I chose was you definitely want to choose a frequency, a refresh frequency, that is something that you'll see. You don't want to choose like, you know, a megahertz or something like that because you, you, you know, you'll, you'll never see it. Um, you can play, well, no, no, that's not totally entirely true. You want to select something that's high enough, I'm sorry, something that's high enough to where it, it, it's not sitting there flickering. I guess that's what I meant to say. Excuse me, it's, it's late, I haven't gotten a lot of sleep. The other way around, you want to take it and make sure that you aren't putting a frequency that's so slow that it's going to cause flicker on it. You want it to be fairly quick. So I put it at 120 hertz, and where I came up with that number was most TVs and things nowadays are 120 hertz refresh. You know, you probably get away with 60 hertz and whatever, but I don't know. I just bought a new big screen not too long ago, and so it had 120 hertz refresh. <laughs> so, and of course, I don't know. I think that's old school now. What are we up to now? Like, isn't it like 400 or something like that? Something crazy. Anyway, um, so I just picked 120 hertz for the frequency. Then we're going to come down here, and I'm initially going to set up. This is the key thing. Um, you can see that down here. That's the key thing that we're going to be looking at uh, to change the pulse width or basically the duty cycle. But I'm going ahead and setting it up with a 50% duty cycle just right out of the get-go. Then we'll come down to our four, uh, which is our infinite uh, infinite loop, um, and then we're going to then we're going to play with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to read our A to D. Okay. Then we're going to multiply it by 25. And where I come up with 25 is 25 is the scaling to scale it to a 255, to a 256. So basically, I want to take 10, basically I'm taking 1024 times what will equal 256. So if you do the algebra, it's going to be 256 divided by 1024 should give us what scale factor we need. And that's about 0.25. So if I take, if I had something that, if I had 1024, well, technically it's 1023 because it's 0 to 1023. Um, so if I have 1023 comes in on the ADC, I multiply it by 0 0.25, I get the 255. Now it's like 0.75, but I'm also typecasting here. So when I typecast, that will cut this 0 0.75 off and give me just 255. So that's how I'm scaling it. So that's all that 0 0.25 is. That's just a scale. To scale it from the 24 bit, or the, sorry, 1024, which is a 10 bit number, down to a simple 8-bit number, which is, you know, 0 to 255, which is what uh, what the CCPR1L is just a single 8-bit register. So we only have 0 to 255. So that's how we're doing that scaling. And that's basically it, guys. Fairly simple, straightforward. Um, just configure your ADC, initialize it, uh, configure and basically, I guess, initialize your uh, PWM wave, pick the frequency you want, set up the timers, and if you want more detail on how to set this up, watch my other videos if you haven't seen them. And I go in depth detail on how all this works and I relate it to the data sheet and everything. So anyway, that's basically it for the PWM LED dimmer. So yep, straightforward guys. Uh, not a whole lot of complexity here. This code will be available. I will take and zip it up into a zip, make it available on the product code link. Or, or project code link. Oh, and by the way, if those of you that don't know where that is, let me, I've had a couple people ask me and, or tell me that they couldn't find that. So we're going to solve that once and for all. We're going to click on YouTube. Uh, we're going to go to me. Let's go to me. Da, 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 da. It's right here. So it's right there. So see that? It says project code link. Um, it's right there. And whoops, we got my video plan. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't expect that to play. I'm not signed in on, on my Ubuntu machine, so it's going to play my intro video. Um, anyway, my project code link is right here. So if you click on that, that takes you, should take you, straight to my Mediafire page. And if it loads, here we go. There's all of the zip files for all the different projects that we've done. See, like there's a 4x4 by four cube and then the accelerometer one, the Arduino Blink sketch, uh, Arduino music, you know, all that stuff, 
all this stuff that we, we've done is always going to be posted here. And I'll upload uh, this code as well. So this code will be uploaded as well. So guys, uh, thanks for your time. Hopefully this video didn't get too terribly long. Um, I don't know, checking the time of it right now. Yeah, it's not too terribly long. So anyway, um, like, subscribe, share. T-shirts, T-shirts are on uh, Zazzle. Um, check those out. If you like what you see, go ahead and order one. Um, uh, some more are going to be going up uh, soon. I find them somewhat humorous. Um, you guys may or may not, but if you like them, go ahead and order one of them. They're they're a lot of fun. I think they're a fairly good price on there, as well as. Uh, yeah, push the like button, subscribe if you haven't, uh, share the videos if you find something that you like. Oh, 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 and one more thing, and I'll put a link to uh, my survey. Those of you that don't know, I had an announcement video, but uh, those of you that don't know, I'm running a survey right now. I'm going to be letting it go for a month. It takes literally like probably like two minutes to fill out, maybe not even that, maybe like 30 seconds to fill out. There's only like three questions on it. But um, what I, I'm just trying to get a feel of more videos that you guys would like. You guys, um, I, I seem to see a lot of good uh, responses to the just the pick microcontroller videos, like like this one uh, that I do, and things like that. So I'm just trying to get a feel for what you guys would uh, like to see. I'm totally all ears in that. And there's even a section I think to where you can just write in whatever you want. So if you know if there's something specific that I don't have a choice for, and in the other you know other three questions or whatever it is you can just type it in and let me know uh what you think so i'll put a link to that like i said i'll probably run that for oh well maybe for another uh, couple weeks and or at least until i see that it maybe tapers off and and not many people are, are filling it out so well, basically we will have saturated so <laughs> i'll uh, i'll take it down and uh analyze the results and we'll uh get some con get some feedback for you guys. I'll probably make another update video after it's all over with letting you know the results of that survey and kind of where the direction I'm going to steer our channel. So guys, with that, not going to try to ramble anymore. I think that's it. We'll see you next time, guys. Take care. That ought to do it.